They're a little bit different now because you have multi-phases, you have relative permeability here. Okay. So, I mean, but this all should be reviewed for you guys, right? You guys want to improve. All right, so now you have rel relative permeabilities. Uh, the relative permeabilities, essentially, there they come from experiments. So you're gonna you have some sort of either empirical or experimental constitutive model, if you will, that's gonna relate the relative permeabilities to saturation, right? So. Um, So it, it, the problem is, when you look at this right away, it looks like we introduced even more unknowns because the relative permeabilities, until we introduce a constitutional model, they're also unknown, right? And now we have pressures also. So so this is where we start to introduce constitutional models and just uh, Couple of things. So over here, you know, we, we mentioned that the the uh, res the uh, formation volume factors for oil and gas are not just you know constants. They're they're, they're functions of pressure. And so let's sort of see what happens, right? So uh, in this in this figure, it's really easy to tell where the bubble point is. It's right here, right? And the reason is, is that we, we know that the ratio, this this RS, right? This is the this is the ratio of gas in the oleic phase, and we know that above the bubble point, it stays in there, right? So it's constant, nothing changes, no, nothing changes. But then, of course, when you drop below the bubble point, well, then that ratio begins to drop off quickly. Okay, so that helps us identify the bubble point, and I can draw that vertical line down to say, you know, the bubble points, what is that, maybe 1,300 or so PSI. Um, but also you'll notice that this is a, this is BO, I know it's a little unclear, that's BO, right? So that's the, res the formation volume factor of oil. And you'll see that it, it sort of, as we drop the pressure, there's a slight increase, right? Um, and, and then it begins to drop off rapidly because the gas is coming out of solution. Right? But also, if you look, so on the on the left is the formation volume factor. <coughs> You'll notice it's always above one. It's between one and two for oil, right? On the right, on the right, we're plotting the viscosity, right? And so the viscosity also changes because so this is the vic this viscosity of oil, right? So initially. It goes down. Initially, it goes down, right? And and this is due to the fact that as I um, as I decrease the pressure, right? So it's a little bit weird on this plot because we're sort of reading it from right to left, right? Because we're sort of interested in what happens when we decrease the pressure past the bubble point. So as we decrease the pressure past the bubble point, initially the viscosity, uh, which is a measure of the sort of fluid motion, resistance to motion, right? So initially, it goes down, and I think uh, this has to do with the fact that, you know, the pressure is dropping, which means that the oil, which is slightly compressible, is expanding a little bit, right? So it's expanding a little bit, and the mean, pre, the mean free path of the molecules, like, like the, the gas, the, the oil molecules, like propensity to bump into each other, sort of friction, right? Uh, because, it, because it's expanding, the mean free path grows a little bit, and they're sort of less likely to bump into each other, although we're talking about molecules, so they sort of bump into each other a lot. But the mean free path increases, and therefore the, velocity, the viscosity goes down, has a little bit less friction in the fluid, a little bit less resistance to, to motion. But then, of course, right at the bubble point, all the gas starts coming out of solution, which leaves behind heavier and heavier oil, right? And so then the viscosity goes, begins to increase as that happens. <coughs> okay. So on the, on the other side for gas, so this is BG, so the formation volume factor for gas, it, it always monotonically decreases as a function of increasing pressure, uh, and likewise the viscosity slightly increases.
All right. So then your, your relative permeabilities, right? So these are just things you go in the lab and measure. And you guys probably did that in petrophysics, right? So you just go in the lab and you measure these. And then you have these curves uh, that are uh, relative permeability is a function of saturation. Right? And then, of course, there's empirical models where, I mean, this is a little bit, it doesn't show up this well, as well. But anyway, um, you have these Brooks Corey empirical models, which you, know, you guys have covered. So th this now gives us a way to sort of eliminate some of those unknowns. So the relative permeabilities were unknowns, but now we have a function of them as a function of saturation. So we can stick them back in our equations and we have fewer unknowns as a result. We have uh, capillary pressure effects. Um, so there's also, I guess, the Brooks Corey capillary pressure effect empirical model, but then there's the Van Genuchten. Did I say that right? I'm a mechanical engineer. I didn't study all this when I was an undergraduate. Uh, by the, you know, I think what I found is, a, so I'm a mechanical engineer undergraduate. Um, uh, my PhD is actually in aeronautics and astronautics, but really also mechanics. And uh, and then you know I, I went on to work at Sandia and learned a whole bunch of geomechanics. Sort of, and that you know sort of slowly came towards petroleum engineering. But I don't know. The point I was going to make was that the longer I'm an engineer. I sort of drop all the labels, and I'm just an engineer now. You know, if you go in my office, I have, it just says professional engineer, not professional petroleum engineer, or chemical engineer, or mechanical engineer. So, give me a PD and a computer, and I'll solve it. Physics are irrelevant. Anyway, so uh, and the, the nice thing, of, I mean, uh, most reservoir simulators would uh, include some type of capillary pressure. But we will, we're just going to assume it's, it's zero. So we're going to say that the, you know, the capillary pressure is, is a function of the, the difference in the oil and uh, the water pressure. So, but on the left-hand side, that's just in, in, we're going to use that as a closure relationship. So we need the equation. But on the left-hand side, it's just going to be equal to zero. So essentially, uh, the, the, that's just saying that the, the pressure in the oil equals the pressure in the, 